We were lucky enough to have a morning flight at 9 a.m. so we didn't have to get to the airport too early. We were flying on a 737 MAX 8. It's about a five hour flight, usually just under. Started the day with a gin and tonic and some snacks, watched the new blue pin, and then we arrived in PV. Bucerias is located around 30 minutes away from Puerto Vallarta. You can take a taxi and you find them outside of the airport right here. Oh, it's hot. <laughs> Once you get to the airport, if you head to your left all the way down, you will see this bridge. Once you cross the bridge, you'll be able to get city taxis and they are much more affordable than the airport taxis. We've got laundry. Oh, this is huge. Wow. This is like a pretty big condo for the amount of money we paid. This is brand spanking new. This is very nice. That's actually a sick view. It's only a good Airbnb if they missed out on a good opportunity. That's pretty good. And it's, like, it's unique because you get to see kind of behind us, but at least it's still, you can see the ocean. I've been waiting months for this drink on this balcony. Our typical Mexico nighttime routine is happy hour. Once the sun sets, we'll go around the town trying to find either a bar or somewhere for another happy hour drink and then dinner. Tonight, we didn't really have any plans. We wanted to walk around a little bit before eating because we'd been in a plane all day. We kind of walked around and we found a taco joint that we had seen before, Taqueria, can't pronounce the rest of the name, and it was amazing. Across the street, there is a kiosco and you can get beer and bring it here because they don't have alcohol. Looks good. What? All of them. All of them. Okay, we're gonna try the chorizo. Awesome. I do like the the uh, pastor better. Al Pastor tacos are tacos that were marinated and then put on a spit, and they are some of my absolute favorite. This place is a must. The next morning, we took advantage of the rooftop pool that our condo had. Now, having a rooftop pool is one of the best things ever. I prefer it to being actually on the water because you get this beautiful view. Also, a sushi bar right behind the pool where you could get drinks and sushi. I'm trying to decide on if I should go to a new place or if I should go and get tacos again from the Brea place because it's literally the best thing and it's all I've been thinking about this whole trip. I'll show you the good breakfast place, but I think I'm gonna get tacos. So the breakfast place is literally down the street, pretty much from where we're staying right now in this area. It is central, but it is a little bit to the north. So depending on where you're staying, it might not be the best place, but for where we generally stay, I really like this place because it's literally like, it's right here. Part of me is tempted to just go there, but also part of me has been thinking about these tacos like the last year. <laughs> no, that sounds dramatic, but it's true. Los Dorados de Villa is a barilla place in the heart of Bucerias and it might be my favorite taco place in Mexico. That is tied with El Itacake, which you will see in Sayulita. This place is amazing. They make burrito tacos, crispy, hard with cheese, whatever you want. They have consomme, they have all the fixins, cilantro, onion, and all of the sauces you could possibly want. It's super affordable at around 30 pesos a taco. You have to check it out if you're in Bucerias. Our next stop is Maria Sol, which used to be an amazing happy hour place, but they got rid of happy hour, so I wouldn't recommend it. But the bar next door still bad? does, and they have music. If you want to get some stupid gifts for your family and friends, the markets near Centro is the right place to go, but they will harass you. That hot? Yeah. For dinner on our last night in Bucerias, we opted for La Posta, which is a reasonably priced Italian place. Really good pastas and pizzas and drink prices. It, it's probably the best place that I would recommend to go in Bucerias. There's a lot of good options, but this one is good value for your money. Wow. What? Do you think they did the crucial Airbnb thing? You're right. So small. 
The last two years we've opted to stay downtown in Tallulah to be close to bars and taco restaurants, but this year we decided to try out being in the jungle. It was really nice, there were some upsides, some downsides, but overall the views were pretty amazing here. If you're coming, I would recommend to stay downtown though. So this is the uh, rooftop of the place that we're staying here in Sayulita. It's really nice. There's two different pools and two different kind of lounging areas. And the views around are, as you can see, quite incredible. La Muer, baby, agua. This road is not the best road in the entire world. What are your thoughts on our road? A little rough. It's a little, huh? So we're just gonna head to the beach and to get some sunscreen. The one thing that we were talking about about the place that we're staying at is it's really nice, it's quiet, it's secluded. Being at the place is amazing, but the problem is there's nothing really close by. So you gotta walk 15 minutes or so to get to everything. And that's not terrible, but it's not, not amazing. Yep. Sounds good. Perfecto. Not that busy here. There's surfboard rentals right here too, huh? And a bar. I know, I noticed the bar. <laughs> this place is bumping. Got everything here. Pro tip, if you are coming to the beach in Sayulita, is to go as far north as possible if you do not want a busy beach. People tend to congregate right at the beach entrance by the main area of town. The further north you go, the more open it gets and the less people there are. And honestly, like people complain about how busy Sayulita, the beach itself is. As it is so busy, <laughs> there's not a lot of people around me. And if you go to the far north end, there's almost nobody. A uh, bit of a hike, but it's worth it if you want some privacy. You didn't even go that far, did you? I got smacked by a big one, though. Four o'clock. Unless if a sunset today for some reason. That'd be impressive. Still, not bad, dude. Tonight we are heading to my favorite restaurant in Sayulita, El Itatake. It makes the best tacos you'll ever have in your entire life. But before that, we had some pre-game drinks to save a little money at the restaurant, even though it's not very expensive. And then we headed down from the jungle into town. El Itacate actually moved this here. They used to be more central and now they are across the bridge down to the main road entrance into Sayulita. It's still the same great restaurant in a nice new building. I opted for a beef and a pork. The pork actually isn't on the menu so I don't know what it is but it's kind of an El Pastor with pineapple. This place has amazing grilled onions and a tin foil wrap, beans and all of the spread. On the special order, it wasn't on the menu. Is like octopus? I can't pronounce this, but they had V60s, so I got a hot coffee on the hottest day. Damn, that looks good. Jalapenos. Today we decided that we've been a little lazy and been just drinking and eating every day, so we took a little walk to the south side of Salida to a different beach that we haven't been before. I'm just in awe. Are you happy we walked like for five minutes now? Yes. It's crazy to me that they're building like condos right behind it, eh? Beautiful cemetery. I wonder how. There's a picture of the guy. 2022. So that's a new. Okay, what beach are we on? Los Playa de Playa Los Muertos. The beach of the dead. There's literally bars next to the thing. Gotta turn up when you pay in your respects. What the hell? This beach is about like. It's a 20 minute walk from our place, so it's about a five minute from like the regular beach. The walk itself is worth coming, I think, just to see like that view and from- the view like during the walk too. Yeah, from Sayulia yeah. is pretty cool, so. If you're looking for an easy walk and a nice little day trip to a beach, this place is definitely worth the visit, nope. but it's not that much different than your regular beach. Once we headed back, we had some drinks and then headed for another happy hour. Now we were looking for a bar that we love going to. The bar is called Yambak Cellulite and it's right by Centro. They have craft beer and it's just an awesome vibe. We ended up going to Escondido, which is a really cool bar, but it's very expensive. The nice thing is they let you bring food from another restaurant. So we went to Taco El Pastor Diaz, which is one of the best taco restaurants in the city as well. From there, we were cheap and tried to find a cheap drink on the beach or anywhere that had a happy hour and we couldn't do so. So we ended up going to Public House, which is a very cool little sports bar in the Centro area. 
If you're looking for an awesome spot to watch a hockey game or a football game, this is the place to go. Compromise by getting what you want again? I said meat in the middle. It's gonna light though. Holy fuck. The next day it was happy hour again and we were headed down to Si Senor, which turned out to be our favorite happy hour spot. It's very expensive, but they do have a two for one happy hour, which makes it like the price of a regular drink. Some of the best views of the beach in Sayulita, and you kind of get the view, the mountains and everything. This is highly recommended. They also have an amazing guac. It is our last day here, tomorrow's travel day. We're at one of the last places, or the last place, I guess that would make sense because it's our last day. I haven't shown this place much because I've been trying to relax, but we're gonna go surfing, go to the beach. Ready to go? Yeah. Hasta la huevo. This place is kind of cool. It's got a little little rooftop patio up there. Yeah, there's there's glass on this road, if I remember correctly. So where we're staying is about a 10 second walk to the centro here, which I'll show you in a minute. So the nice thing about this is you can just go get tacos, go get foods, go get whatever you want. So I highly recommend trying to stay as close to downtown as you possibly can. Hola. Hola. See, we're already at the Centro. This is where the glass was, I think. Yep, right there. So if you're heading back from Sayulita to PV for your flight, I think it's about a thousand pesos, and you should try and book the taxi cab in the morning just in case it's busy. You should also give yourself lots of time because there's bad roads. All the cabs line up right here on this side of Centro. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know. They're beautiful. So you stay downtown, it's only about a two minute walk to wherever you want to go on the beach. And last time we were here, we stayed literally like, you can see it right up there. If you can, if you can find a place to stay downtown, it's highly recommended. And now we're at the beach. It's beautiful, look. I want to surf, but I'm not very good, and the waves look almost even more intimidating. Well, I went surfing for about 17 minutes. Tons of fun, a lot more tiring than I remember. I think when I was in Punta Mita, the last time I, I really tried surfing, the swell or the waves weren't as repetitive, so they give you a little bit of break to get back out. And just kind of, once you catch a wave and you paddle back, I'm just pooped. We booked tattoos at Papillon Tattoo, the last day of our trip, and this is an amazing little family-run studio run by Chop. He tattooed me, and Steph was tattooed by one of their artists on resident. They have people come in all the time. This is an awesome spot if you want to get tattooed on your vacation. Highly recommended. Then it was time to head home on the 737 Max 8. I put on a little bit of that new Indiana Jones, had a couple wines, went to bed. That's the end of the trip. Thanks for watching.